I, I, I work in web digital at the moment, have for the last 20 years, but I started off doing practical uh, effects for prosthetics. Uh, I've also been a model maker, and um, uh, definitely the duct tape, baling wire, and rubber cement um, uh, portion of my life is still going to a certain <laughs> extent. Just sometimes the, the type of tape, the type of wire, and the type of cement have changed over the years. <laughs> um, but it's certainly something I, I love is the working with the hands and in my case, prosthetics makeup, but also model making is great as well. Hello, I'm Ed Kramer, and for many years I've been doing computer graphics. I started out in the late 1970s, uh, so that is many years. Um, <clears throat> in the early 1980s, I started on a CGI device called Scanimate, which was an analog computer that was programmed by plugging in wires, turning knobs, and flipping switches, like believe it or not. Yeah, so that's my version of uh, duct tape and bailing wire. <laughs> um, and then uh, eventually I became a uh, sequence supervisor at a small company called Industrial Light and Magic. And my claims to fame at Industrial Light and Magic were um, that if any of you saw The Mummy, I was the guy who supervised the scarabs. Uh, if, if any of you have seen Galaxy Quest, I supervised the rock monster. By grabbing hammer. By grabbing hammer. What a savings. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and now I live in Denver, Colorado, and I teach CGI and have been doing that for about the last decade. Excellent. My name is Greg Bossert, though I write, I came here as a science fiction writer and got a lot of film panels, but uh, I write as Gregory Norman Bossert, because Norman's my mom's maiden name. I, um, I also am a filmmaker, and I started doing my own animations. Worked in art departments for years on a bunch of projects, went to a company called Image Movers, Movers Digital, and now I'm a supervising artist at Industrial Light and Magic. And um, if you come tomorrow to my uh, presentation, I'll talk about some of the stuff I've worked on, but I won't go over the list now. So, God, you're all looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I suppose, what's the, let's start off with a nice softball. Uh, what is the, what's the disaster that no one knows about? <laughs> I would say that everything has gone horribly wrong. Like yeah, what's maybe, not a disaster? Yeah. Maybe it just becomes a, a, a low level quantum flux of wrongness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk, you know, more a bit about prosthetics, because that's, the physical side of it that I've, I've done the most work on. Um, but there are definitely times when things have melted. Um, and <laughs> Literally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, um, but, but you just got to fix the edges and, and hopefully keep going. You know, we, certainly back when I was doing um, prosthetics, there was not much less of the, hey, let's fix it in post, um, which, by the way, always makes me grit my teeth. Um, <laughs> Doesn't at all. Yeah, exactly. 
It's, uh, all, it's, a, it's a phrase universally used by people who don't know what post is. <laughs> <laughs> or have no idea how frustrating it is for those of us who have to fix it. Yeah. Uh, um, but anyway, that's fine. Uh, sorry, that's not intended to be a, um, uh, what's the word, a, a, a psychiatric session. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it, as far as, uh, does, it's not really a disaster, but I, usually I get asked the question, what was the hardest show that you worked on? And I, I do have an answer for that one. Uh, and that was a movie called The Perfect Storm. Yeah. Now, usually when you do visual effects, you work out all the techniques beforehand. Like when I did the Rock Monster for Galaxy Quest, I figured out how to make the dust and rock chips and sand kind of when, whenever the, the rocks would clang together or, or, or crash together, you know, to get dust and rocks to emit from those moments. Um, and figure out the techniques to make the ground crack when he walks, all those things. And we did that beforehand. I trained all the TDs uh, who were working on individual shots, and it just all worked out of the box for every single shot. But then, on the movie uh, Perfect Storm, because the ocean, in some shots, it was this level of, uh, of you know, height of wave and, uh, and intensity of storm, and in some shots there was this height of wave. Every single shot required its own research and development. So there was, that was the hard, when, uh, when we started, I went into the production office, and when you go into the production office on a show, there's a, a, a a board showing each individual shot that you have to work on and it's got someone's name attached to it as the technical director and all of the shots that were on the the wall you know a wall almost as big as this um, they had they were color coded and there were three different colors and I asked well what does this color mean because you know I've got shots and they've got this color and that and I was told that the the first color meant really difficult <laughs> The second color meant unbelievably difficult. <laughs> and the third color meant impossible. And those were the only three categories of shots there were in that movie. So, there you go. When we worked on Jumanji, people don't realize this about Jumanji, but the monkeys in the kitchen and the lion were the first time that anyone had ever seen computer-generated fur. And we worked all that out at Industrial Light and Magic to figure out, you know, it, it called for the monkeys and the lion, and they were CG, so they had to have fur. Uh, and so as they were developing the, the fur software, um, we, uh, I, I took, I got the software from uh, the development team, I think it was uh, Kerry Phillips. Um, He's still there. Is he? Uh, <laughs> And um, so I put a light on the monkey just to test out the fur. And I shined a light on the front of the monkey like this. And the light showed up on the back of the monkey. <laughs> and I said, this is crazy. So I put a, a light on the back of the monkey and sure enough, the light showed up on his front. And so I, I called Carrie and, um, and he looked at it and he goes, hmm. He sat down at the computer right next to me. And, he's tired, and he goes, ah! And it turned out that there was a plus sign where there should have been a minus sign. He recompiled the code and then the light showed up on the front of the monkey. And that's, that's how it kind of works when you're doing the R&D. And so with the lion, with the mane, um, a TD named Carl Frederick was in charge of uh, running the turntables for the lion so that we could do the, the look development for the lion. It's called look dev. Um, and the mane just looked very puffy, like the lion had just come from the beauty parlor. <laughs> and and, and we, we realized that hair clumps. It clumps together. And so the, um, I, I guess Carrie went back to his code and, and they implemented a, a way for the hair to clump together. And so Carl that night uh, for the first time ran a turntable of the lion with clumping behavior, but he didn't know what value to set it at. <laughs> so the next morning we came in to watch dailies and sure enough the, there's the turntable of the lion with long dreadlocks. <laughs> 
Somewhere that, that tape still exists. Don't stand behind, please, Don't put your camera, Okay.